Good afternoon. Welcome to a discussion of financial regulatory reform. Uh, my name is Jesse Abraham. I'm a vice president at Wells Fargo Home Mortgage, based here in St. Louis, and currently serving as president of the local gateway chapter of the National Association for Business Economics, also known as NABE, N-A-B-E. Before introducing our host, Dr. James Bullard, president of the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank, I do want to take a moment to tell you a little bit about NABE. We are a national organization with rough, roughly 2,300 members composed of business economists and others who use economics in their work. We offer continuing education programs, teleconferences in eight uh, specialty areas such as finance, real estate and utilities, a job bulletin board, local chapters in various cities across the country, and two annual conferences. Our annual meeting will be held in Denver, Colorado on October 9 through 12 and feature such prominent economists as J Janet Yellen, John Taylor, and Lawrence Meyer. Registration forms for membership in the national organization and for the annual meeting are in the table just outside the conference room that you may have seen. You came in, I guess, to the right as you were you to go out that way. The local gateway chapter is undergoing a revival after seven years in remission. We anticipate conducting at least several more programs through the coming nine months, starting with a session on the St. Louis City Earnings Tax in October. The date and location for that event have not yet been finalized. If you're not currently an NABE member, you should be. But in any case, please contact me to ensure you learn about that event. Now, I'd like to thank our esteemed speakers uh, for agreeing to share their thoughts with us today and to thank and introduce our host, Dr. James Bullard, President and Chief Executive Officer of the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank. Dr. Bullard is an accomplished researcher and thought leader within the economics profession. He joined the Research Division of the Federal Reserve Bank in 1990 and has attained positions of increasing responsibility before being chosen as President and CEO in April 2008. He currently is a voting member of the Federal Reserve's Open Market Committee and the National Monetary Policy Setting Authority. Please join me in thanking the bank for hosting this event and welcoming Dr. James Bullard. Thank you, and uh, welcome to a discussion of financial regulatory reform, which is jointly sponsored by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis and the Gateway Chapter of the National Association of Business Economics. Today's session is a kickoff to a series of public events that the St. Louis Fed is planning to hold on various aspects of the new financial regulatory reform law. Future events will discuss resolution authority for large systemically important institutions, the related issue of too big to fail, systemic risk monitoring and the role of the Financial Stability Oversight Council, direction and implications of the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection, and mortgage reform in the future of mortgage finance. <clears throat> we at the St. Louis Fed believe that public education initiatives and events like today's are important in helping individuals, firms, and financial market participants make the best possible decisions. Macroeconomic policy works best when economic actors understand the policy and its implications for their decisions. Poor decisions are often the byproduct of incomplete information on this dimension. The passage of a law as broad and potentially far-reaching as the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010 naturally has raised many questions in the minds of business leaders and financial market participants. I think we will hear a lot about those questions today and the uncertainty that has been generated in financial markets. There is no question that, despite the passage of the legislation, regulatory reform is still far from complete. In particular, and most pressing, there is considerable, a considerable rule-writing process that must take place at the agency level. Because the devil is in the details, economic decisions are being affected by the uncertainty surrounding the rule-writing process. I am anxious to learn more from our panel concerning the nature of this uncertainty. But there are many other ways in which the passage of the legislation is only the beginning of regulatory reform. The new Financial Stability Oversight Council is only about to start on the immense task of trying to identify 
in real time financial risks that pose a significant threat to the health of our macro economy. That's a tall order. The legislation famously did not address mortgage finance reform, specifically what to do with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. I'm encouraged that a process appears to be underway for resolving the conservatorship of these two mortgage giants. Any reform in this area will also have to address the role of the Federal Housing Administration. It is very important that we design a system that, on the one hand, can provide efficient financing for those individuals that desire and can afford to own their own home, and on the other hand, minimizes future losses to the taxpayer. Ultimately, the public must decide how much government involvement, if any, there will be in residential mortgage financing going forward. I favor a system that allows the private sector to do all it can in this area and relies on government intervention only to resolve key problems not otherwise addressed by the market solution. I hope to say more on this in coming months. Many have argued that the new law, via a liquidation facility, will eliminate too big to fail as we have come to know it. While the liquidation facility is certainly a step in the right direction, it is unclear at this point how much credibility the facility actually enjoys. Do markets believe that the facility will actually be used to shut down a systemically important institution in a future financial crisis? If not, too big to fail lives on. My own sense is that the new facility will not have the credibility needed to deter the perception of too big to fail until it is actually used successfully. At that point, financial markets will come to believe that the new system is serious and will price assets accordingly. But it is unclear when or how credibility can be built for the new facility before the next financial crisis arrives. Finally, there's a great deal of uncertainty about the role of the new Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection. I do not think it was Congress's best moment to have the Bureau housed inside and funded by the Fed, but without appropriate oversight authority, also at the Fed. Still, that is the current state of affairs, and our job now is to be as helpful as we can in helping to level the playing field in the area of consumer financial protection. I do think that better consumer understanding of the financial product marketplace can result in a more competitive market and better household decision making. This could be very important in the functioning of financial markets going forward. Modern economies depend crucially on healthy, well-functioning financial markets. The sooner we can reduce uncertainty about the implementation of regulatory reform, the better off the economy and the financial industry will be. I trust that you will find today's session informative, and I hope that we can use it to guide us as we consider where society needs to go next to minimize the consequences of future, future financial disruptions. Thank you, and welcome to our event. And for those of you that don't know her, let me uh, uh, introduce Julie Stackhouse. She's our senior, senior VP in charge of uh, bank supervision and regulation, and she's going to host our event most of the day or moderate our event most of the day. Okay. Julie? Thank you. Well, I, too, would like to welcome everyone, and let me explain just briefly how we'll carry out our discussion today. <clears throat> I'll individually, I'll ask each of the panel members individually to come up and provide about 10 minutes of comments on their thoughts on financial regulatory reform. With that, they'll introduce themselves. Some of these individuals you may know, some of them you may not, but they'll give you a little background of where their perspective is from. After that, we'll convene the, the group as a panel and go through some questions that I have prepared. And finally, we'll open it up to your questions at the end of the session. By sometime later this week, we will post on our public website for your review a session on regulatory reform and overview that we did for bankers. We'd like to make that more broadly available. So from the standpoint of a little bit more of a primer on the totality of the uh, Dodd-Frank bill, you'll be able to see that later this week.